So, last class we have started construction and uh, construction monitoring. So, we have started this materials, materials in this materials uh, grain size distribution analysis of material like core, filters and drains. Then uh, uh, you should sure that ensure that material installed meet the specifications. Make sure that as I explained also earlier borrow material do not change that means if you take borrow material from one place you will have to take the same material from the same place. Then material tested that means uh, triaxial extension as well as shear test for filter and core, for filter and core and consolidation for core material because you need to have less permeable material. Then hydraulic conductivity lab test for filter as well as core and field clay that means by means of double ring infiltrometer and centrifuge permeometer. Proctor test uh, uh, you will have to conduct proctor test for the source material in the boro pit and material hauled to the site. Field compaction uncompacted layer thickness that means 300 mm maximum compaction equipment is suitable. Moisture content and maximum dry density you will have to do by means of nuclear density sand core or rubber balloon method. Make sure that if you are using uh, nuclear density then nuclear density uh, equipment should be calibrated. And place uh, loose soil in the field and compact it to make soil strong as, as far as possible so that you will get maximum shear strength and very little settlement and low hydraulic conductivity for soil lowest EM highest dry unit weight uh, take the for soil means lowest void ratio so that you will achieve high dry unit weight. Up to this we have completed then well, uh, this is a table for this uh, soil compaction. Uh, if you look at this it has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 parts fine aggregate make it into fine aggregate make it into clay and silt, coarse aggregate uh, it, it is sand and gravel and rock fill, cobbles and uh, boulders. If you look at this clay uh, application primarily application primarily for dam construction, dam construction, embankment for road, rail track, airport construction, trenches and backfill and sanitary landfill construction. Uh, clay fraction generally would take if it is uh, less than this fraction is finer than 2.002 mm or 2 micron, silt is from 0 0.002 to 0 0.06 and the compactibility uh, difficult to compact due to the cohesion. If you go for a compaction for clay soil difficult to compact because of cohesion, compaction effect depends of depends strongly on water content because you will have to add water it depends strongly on water content. Material needs high compaction energy then compaction equipment primarily heavy and medium size single drum roller primarily if the clay soil has been used for this uh, dam construction this uh, equipment is used single drum or medium size single drum roller smooth or pad foot drums trench compactor and heavy for trench compactor and heavy plates also used. Now if you come back for sand and gravel for particularly coarse aggregate sand and gravel application is primary for embankments sub bases that means embankment sub base, base for road, road base, rail track, airport construction, foundation for building, coarse aggregate generally used foundation for building, trenches and backfill. You see it is given here in the pictorial view how the sand looks and your uh, gravel how it looks. Gravel generally range is 2 to uh, 60 mm and sand is 6 micron to 2 mic uh, means 2 mm and compatibility that means depends upon the grading that means it depends upon the your grade size, uh, grain, grain size distribution too much compaction may be detrimental and compaction equipment generally used vibratory rollers of single drum rollers that means smooth drums you can use heavy and medium size plates. If you are using compaction by means of plates 
then you can go for heavy and medium size plate. If you compare both these fine as well as coarse segregate for these heavy plates as well as strange compactor used, but in this case heavy and medium size plates has been used. Then rock fill that means cobbles and uh, boulders uh, application primarily for uh, dam construction, embankment for road and rail track and airport construction, foundation for building and uh, the size of the cobbles is uh, greater than 60 mm and boulders are greater than 100 mm. Look at this uh, how this boulders looks like, cobbles looks like and compactibility uh, layer thickness should be 3 times, 3 times thicker than maximum particle size. That means layer thickness is you will have to take, you will have to decide what is the thickness of the layer to be compacted. It should be maximum that means it is 3 times than your maximum particle size. Material lead needs high compaction energy, particularly the material needs high compaction energy. Compaction equipment primarily use heavy single drum rollers and heavy plates. These are the overall soil compaction if you want to use for your dam construction suppose fine aggregate, coarse aggregate or maybe rock fill. What should be your what should be your compaction? What what type of compaction you are going to use? And what is your compaction equipment you are going to use? And how means this this gives a brief idea. Means what type of equipment you are going to use? If it is a fine aggregate, if it is a coarse aggregate, and if it is uh, rock fill. Now application guidelines for particularly vibratory rollers. These are all your rollers. If you look at these rollers. Uh, earthwork dams, particularly earthwork for particular dams, rocks and loams, granular base and soft base that means gravel, uh, gravel, uh, gravel sand, sand, asphalt base, asphalt base is your road, road particularly asphalt base, course and asphalt wearing course and the static linear pressure because you will have to apply a minimum amount of pressure so that you will get value of E should be minimum and maximum density should be achieved. It should be kg per cm kg per linear pressure kg per cm square. Um, so, if you if you apply it, it should be greater than 30, 30 for particularly earthwork dams and for granular bases and sub bases it should be greater than equal to 10, it should not be less than 10. For asphalt base course and asphalt wearing courses it is varying between 10 to 30 and uh, amplitude generally what amplitude will give in mm that means it is greater than 1, 1 or 5, it is greater than 0 0.4, 0 0.35 to 0 0.9. Frequency, generally what frequency we are going to apply in terms of hertz, it is 28 for earth work dams 28 to 35, for granular base and sub bases 28 to 60, for asphalt base course and asphalt wearing courses 30 to 60 and 40 to 60 and rolling speed kilometer per hour what is your rolling speed you are going to apply 1 to 2.5, 2 to 4 and 2 to 4 and 2 to 6. Look at this how this sit foot, uh, sit foot rollers it looks like. If you look at this sit foot rollers there are there are just threaded parts around the periphery of the roller. So, that it has been used particularly for clay soil because it has a high cohesive. So, uh, the rolling can be done very uh, effectively. Now, soil compacted weight optimum will be ductile and self healing and soil compacted dry optimum will be brittle and susceptible to cracking and specify optimum plus 2 percent for clay cores. What do you mean by if you look at your compacted in weight optimum and compacted in dry optimum? If this is my compaction curve for example, if this is my compaction curve if this is my compaction curve, if you look at the compaction curve that means dry unit weight versus moisture content and this is your, this is your, this value in this compaction curve, this value is coming about, this is your maximum dry density corresponding to your OMC, optimum moisture content. Left hand side, this side, this side is your dry, dry optimum means from optimum it is your dry side and this side is your wet side, this side is your wet side, 
wet side this is your dry side. Now, if you look at here that means, soil compacted on wet optimum will be ductile and self healing will be slightly ductile and self healing for wet, wet side that means, this side of the right hand side of OMC. Similarly, soil compacted in dry optimum, similarly soil compacted in dry optimum that means, this side from here to this side dry optimum side generally it is a brittle and there is a chance of crack. So, generally you will have to specify what is your compaction generally optimum plus minus 2 percent for clay cores. That means, if this is my OMC, so let us say 15 percent is your OMC, this is your optimum moisture content which is your dry density, generally you will recommend for 2 percent. That means, 15 percent plus to 17 percent of your compaction moisture density for particularly clay cores. Now, soil compaction measurement, how do you measure it soil compaction measurement? There are different way, different uh, as I said earlier one is your core test, other is your sand replacement method and third is your nuclear gauge. This is your nuclear gauge method. Now, in this in case of uh, soil compaction measurement by means of sand cone method, uh, use dry sand with known dry density. If you are using, if you are using by means of sand replacement method, in this case what you are going to do use a dry sand, use dry sand with known dry density. Before you are using this method, you should know what is the dry density of that sand and specific gravity also and specific gravity also. Use dry sand to get volume of hole quick and reliable method. Once you are using a dry sand, that means volume of hole, it uh, particularly it will be quick and it gives a reliable test. If you go back, if you see this by means of sand cone method, a hole has been specified, hole has been made. That means, once you make a hole, you know, you know this height, you know this height, you know this uh, width, then you can know this what is that volume of this hole. And with that volume, you will apply of a dry sand to pour inside. So, that means, weight of the volume of the hole replaced by dry sand, if you know, then you can find it out what is your uh, compaction, how much your compaction has been done means by means of your sand cone method. Another one is more most effective nowadays it has been used that is called nuclear gauge method, that is called nuclear gauge method. In nuclear gauge method what happen? Generally radioactive material has been used to get moisture content and soil density. If you look at here, uh, this uh, generally a nuclear gauge is there from radioactive material has been used to get the moisture content and soil density. It is a very effective and quick method. Reliable, it is very reliable, you will have to calibrate every time. Once you do it, you will have to calibrate with the known uh, density. Once you know, if you know the density of this soil, known density if you know, then you calibrate from this uh, by means of nuclear gauge how much you are getting. Then you take it, then do this where is where your soil compaction has been made. Radioactive device therefore, special transportation and rules must be followed. The means for calibration has to be done and because radioactive device it is a, it is a radioactive device definitely you will have to follow certain rules because it should not be exposed to public. Compaction level, compaction level that means in situ dry unit weight divided by maximum dry unit weight proctor into 100 percent into 100, it is generally uh, uh, mentioned in terms of percentage. Standard proctor specification uh, 95 to 100 percent maximum dry unit weight, MDUW is maximum dry unit weight. Similarly, if you are there are as I said earlier there are two methods, one is your standard proctor method, another is your modified proctor method. In case of modified proctor method, generally this compaction level uh, once you compact, if you get a compaction level of 
90 to 98 percent that means, you have achieved your compaction level. If you are using a standard proctor generally 95 to 100 percent has been used that means, that is your standard. So, it is your MDUW is your uh, maximum dry unit weight by using modified proctor specification that means, 90 to 98, 95 to 100. How do you find it out compaction level? In situ dry unit weight, what is your in situ condition and maximum dry unit weight by means of proctor into 100. If you look at here in, in terms of graphical point of view, uh, there is a compaction curve dry unit weight versus moisture, con moisture content, then this is, the, this is your compaction curve, this is your compaction curve and this is your optimum moisture content and with respect to optimum moisture content whatever you are getting that is your maximum dry density and uh, with this uh, 95 percent field specification you have to mark a 95 percent of field specification uh, makes your compacted soil same as proctor material means whatever you are compacting in the soil in the ground it is the same material it has been used while doing in the laboratory test. It should not be a different material and this is this is your specification and you can mark it your 95 percent field compaction line where it lies. Then, then first is your first part is your measurements, then is your instrumentation. Second part is your field instrumentation. Generally, particularly at dam, these are all uh, um, very sensitive project as well as the cost is very high. Generally, the field instrumentation that means, you will have to make the field instrumentation means, you will have to make instrument in the field particularly during the construction. So, that measure performance of structure during the construction means, how during the construction how, how it is how what is the performance of that. If it is a earth field dam that means, what is that performance then long term monitoring of structure behavior and health particularly long term monitoring of structure behavior and health must not impact structure performance. It should not be used to impact, it should not be uh, impact your structural performance whatever you are doing your field instrumentation. Engineers should develop justification for geotechnical instrumentation program on their project means particularly if uh, geotechnical engineer is there you will have to justify. In practice such program are used to save lives, save money and reduce risk failure, reduce particularly there if there is a chance of risk of failure you can if you measure it hardly then you can rectify it. Reasons to uh, install instrumentation that means, indicate impending failures, provide warning it also gives some warning if there is any problem. Reveal unknowns, it gives what are the unknowns you left for the design. Evaluate critical design assumptions, critical design assumption, assess contractors means and methods, it also assess suppose you are you have already designed something and contractor has given some specification and methods, it also assess whether it is telling with your this contractors means and methods, minimize damage due to this adjacent structure, if there are structures nearby it will minimize by means of instrumentation. Then control construction, you can have a control over the construction, you can change on the field from the beginning that if there is any mistake you can change uh, during the construction. Control the operation also, how you are doing this construction, this entire operation has also been controlled. Provide data to help select remedial methods to fix problem, that means, it gives a data provide data to help select remedial methods to fix problems, documents performance for assessing damages, inform stakeholders, satisfy regulation regulators, reduce litigation and advance state of knowledge. This is more important, you, your state of knowledge also you will gain state of knowledge day to day basis. How actual we have done in the test in the laboratory, we implement in the field, how it is how far, how far whether it is close to this laboratory or whether it is uh, how far it is from this laboratory test, whether it you are getting this result up to your desirable uh, uh, design parameters. 
field instrumentations, uh, there are different field instrumentation, one is your piezometers. Piezometer generally used to measure excess pore water pressure, PWP, PWP is your pore water pressure, generally it has been uh, named as PWP. Excess pore water pressure in the core during compaction, that means if there is a compaction during compaction you can measure excess pore water pressure. Uplift pressure, piezometer gives an idea what is your uplift pressure, as I said, as I said if this is a dam section, if this is a dam section, then if this is your upstream and this is your downstream, if this is your flow lines, then it gives if the flow lines exit in the downstream phase, then if there is any uplift pressure built, then it can give also uplift pressures and foundation head loss. How much head loss? That means, water passes from upstream to downstream, what is your head loss? Then core phreatic surface, if this is the core, if this is the core, then what this phreatic surface, core phreatic surface also it gives. That means, piezometer has wide application, number one measurement of excess pore water pressure in the core during compaction or during construction. Second is your uplift pressure, that means at the downstream phase, what is your uplift pressure generated. Third is your foundation head loss, how much is your foundation head loss. Then fourth is your core phreatic, phreatic, it is wrong, it is not phreatic, it is phreatic, P H P H R E A T I C, core phreatic surface. Then this, this is your use of your piezometer. Second one is your field instrumentation, that is your inclinometers. That means inclinometers generally used to measure this stability of slopes and foundations. Whether it is a stable, if there is a slope, if there is a slope, this kind of slope, whether this slope is stable or not you can measure it by means of inclinometers. Then there are settlement gauge, gauges, settlement gauges generally used to measure the settlements, settlements of the foundation, settlement of the compacted layers. Then extensometer, then earth pressure, earth pressure, total earth pressure that means earth pressure, soil earth pressures, earth pressures generally provide along the soil to measure if is there any soil arching, if is there any soil arching. So, these are the different field instrumentation, different parts that means piezometer, inclinometer, settlement gauges, extensometers, total earth pressures. Now suggested piezometer locations, if this is your earth dam and this is your core, this is your core and this is your earth fields, suggested piezometer location. If you look at here, generally this is a cut off wall, this is your core, you can provide piezometers, piezometers along the field as well as along the core, core as well as, as well as bottom. First number one is your control placement of field. If you see number one, this is your number one point that means control placement of field. This means your placement of field has been done, it will control that means it will monitor pore water pressure to find shear strength and measurement of uplift pressure. Why the piezometer location at this? because it will control the placement field, because this is a field material. Also it measures the shear strength measurement of uplift pressure. Two is your same thing, it is in the upstream side along the field, it is in the downstream side along the field. Second is your also, this is your second, control the placement of field, monitor pore water pressure PWP is your pore water pressure to find shear strength and measurement of uplift pressure and monitor also seepage it monitor also seepage, how much is your seepage is passing from upstream to downstream also it monitor. Then third, if you look at your third, these are all third points along the inside your art dam. The third points means control placement of field, control the placement of field, how it has been placed it will be controlled, also monitor the seepage, how much water passes through this art dam also it monitors. Piezometers, uh, piezometers, generally if you look at this piezometer how it uh, 
looks particularly piezometer it is a it is a cross sectional view and piezometer water pressure has been given uh, there is a stand pipe then bentonite cement grout has been done then there is a irritated tip then uh, it has been connected with the vented cap means detailed view of your piezometers has been uh, it has been shown then second part is your second part is your inclinometer if you look at the inclinometer inclinometer what happen it measure your whether the slope is stable is there in lateral movement or not if you look at here this is a dam cases in these cases inclinometers has been provided along the slope 1 2 3 so it generally monitor lateral earth pressure movements if there is a movement of this slope lateral earth pressure movement in embankment this is an embankment that is detect movement of downstream of earth field dam the movement you have done by means of filling compacting downstream phase if this is my off stream this is your downstream it dictates detect any downstream slope movement in the downstream any fill material or any 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 movement of the soil in the downstream phase particularly during impounding and determine types of shear and zone of foundation also determine types of shear and zone of foundation means how how it sheared types of shear and zone of foundation monitor stability of upstream slope during and after impounding also it monitors the stability of slope of the, your upstream phase also it determine depth direction magnitude and rate of movement look at here depth along the depth means at here at here at here at here along the depth and direction whether it in x y or z direction vertical lateral or maybe inclined direction any direction then magnitude how much what is that rate of settlement and how much is your rate what is the rate it determines depth direction magnitude and rate of movement this is about this use of this inclinometer typical inclinometer if you look at this typical inclinometer it has been shown in different parts uh, it, it has been but typical case has been taken uh, uh, from this James Cook University in Australia how this inclinometer has been used as I said in embankment locate shear zone and help identify whether shear is planar or circular if I provide the inclinometer if you look at here this is your inclinometer this is your inclinometer potential slip plane that means the slip plane is simply a planar or slip plane is a circular in shape that you can determine by means of inclinometer measure the movement at shear zone along the shear zone if this is the shear zone along the shear zone it may measure how it move movement along the shear zone and whether movement is constant or constant rate or maybe it is in a faster rate in details you can find it out by means of inclinometer so inclinometer what is the basic part is inclinometer must be founded into a solid foundation so that it should not be uh, it should not be disturbed if it is a weak foundation inclinometer also move inclinometer should not move it should be founded inside a solid foundation so that it is stable so these are the uh, results uh, some of the results of the inclinometer how there are movements at the top part then at the bottom it there is no movement it has been shown similarly some results also displacement versus time has been shown by measuring from your inclinometers there are also called tilt meter one one uh, equipment one instrument that is called tilt meter it monitor changes in the tilt of the structure if there is a structure whether the structure has been tilted or not it has been it, it, it generally used to monitor the tilt of the structure activities such as dewatering tunneling excavation causes settlement or lateral deformation you can measure it 
placement of surcharge and pressure may cause heaps, dam impounding excavation beyond diaphragm wall also you can measure, monitor different settlements also dewatering. So, this is called a tilt meter which is generally called in kilometer or tilt meter it is the same name, name has been changed because it will measure the uh, monitor position changes of the tilt in the structure that is why the name has come as a tilt meter. Then settlement gauge or settlement cells, settlement gauge or settlement cells generally is a pneumatic settlement provide at a single point measurement of settlement. If you look at here they can be read from the central location and partially useful where access is difficult and monitor consolidation during the construction and long term settlement in the foundation of the field. This is most important. The settlement said monitor consolidation during construction means if I if this is my field material if I allow the settlement cell during the construction how much consolidation occur it will also monitor. Also in long term, in long term if this dam how much it settle it of the foundation soil it also monitor. As I said my monitor long term settlement and consolidation in the foundation embankment. This is an embankment foundation embankment if you place the settlement cell. So, it can measure long term uh, particularly um, long term settlement it can measure. These are typical settlement cells, boron extensor meter in this borehole extensor meter it has been provided also. Another one is your borehole extensor meter. Another way of borehole extensor meter monitor the settlement heaps, convergence and lateral deformation in the soil and rock. This is called borehole extensor meter inside the borehole an extensor meter has been provided for vertical settlement provide, uh, profile, it has been used to measure your vertical settlement profile. Uh, generally it has been used in if you look at here this is called borehole extensor meter, monitor vertical settlement particularly earth field dam in the toe of the dam, in the toe of the dam, if this is the hill this is the toe in the toe of the dam you can measure your vertical settlement. Monitor settlement to determine whether construction can continue or not, it borehole extensor meter vertical settlement it measure whether you can also decide whether the same construction can continue or if you want to modify the construction techniques. Then there are total as I said total pressure cell, it is measured combined pressure of effective, effective stress as well as pore water pressure. The moment you use your total pressure cell it will measure two parameter, one is your what is your effective stress as well as how much is your pore water pressure developed. So, embankment dam particularly embankment dam verify assumption and once of soil pressure in excess of those a structure is designed to withstand. It determine distribution magnitude direction of total stress. It determine distribution magnitude and direction of your total stress. What is your stress distribution? What is its magnitude and in what direction it is there it measure earth pressure cell how it typical looks earth pressure cell it is a uh, visual you can see how the earth pressure cell it looks and total pressure cell how it has been put it inside. Then typical instrumentation of large dam and this is your instrumentation in particularly your rock field dams also and earthen dam. So, up to this I can stop it here. Uh, next class I will continue the other part of this. Thank you.